Welcome back everyone. So this is a highly requested video. I've had a lot of requests from everyone asking to break down how we could use Thinkorswim platform, that is TD Ameritrade's TOS Thinkorswim to execute day trades, specifically how to set up orders, how to have stop losses, take profits, trailing stops and everything else. Also how to optimize so that you can move quickly from window to window without lagging. Now, before we begin, there is something important that I want to say here just to get out in the open and to be very clear about which I've stated before. That is, I am not a fan of executing through Thinkorswim. I have found too often that there is lagging in terms of execution and getting fills, and that is absolutely critical for anybody who is day trading. In fact, any kind of trading whatsoever, you don't want to lag on your fills and have your price missed. You don't want to see the price blow past your stop limits. I've tested Thinkorswim recently. I had this position, uh, I formulated this position long ago when Thinkorswim transitioned to the free model. I noticed everything started slowing down and I like to be up to date. So recently I took a few test trades through Thinkorswim and unfortunately it remains a serious issue. I also see lagging in the charting at times. Now, while I will use it for charting, I do not like to use it for executions. I prefer interactive brokers. I think that right now, interactive brokers is the best all round platform. There's gonna be a link here to show you my setup on interactive brokers. And if you're, interested, if you're interested in just learning a little bit more, excuse me, please check the description as I have a link where you could just check it out, learn the basics and understand. And if you become interested, you could sign up and do a test and to see, compare and contrast the differences. But I do know that there are some of you who will remain on Thinkorswim regardless. So I wanna make sure that you're protected as well, because even if you have a laggy broker, at least I can help you understand how to best take advantage of the features that they do have available. So let's get started. All right, so what you see on the left-hand side is I have pulled up the code for a Tesla option, and you can see the date here. Now, in front of us, we have the chart. We all know how Thinkorswim works, we link different modules these are different modules so this is a watch list module this is a news module by numbers and this is the charting module so for example this is linked to one if i were to link this to three that would be set up to a completely different watch list different data and information but because i'm clicking on qqq if i have this link to one then we see qqq is here qqq news is here and QQQ charting is right here, right? We want it linked, that way it can move and just say, okay, show me what's going on with SPY, right? And it'll pull up the SPY news, it'll pull up the SPY chart, and I have SPY in my watch list. And this is gonna be important because I'm gonna show you a little shortcut with this. But we get the Tesla code. So this is just gonna be the option that we work with. How do we get the Tesla code? Well, we can go over to uh, pull up our options, right? And pull up our option setup right here. So we get over to options on Thinkorswim. And I pull this out as a separate window, right? So you know that you have tools and market watch and charts and scanning. And so when you get into trade, you're gonna see options. And what you could do is you can actually pop this out by going to detach now. When you do that, we're just gonna go back to charts. You're going to get something like this. And I like to have it separate. I keep this in a different window. You can configure it however you'd like. Some people make this window, this main window smaller and keep this on the side. Whatever's convenient for you. I have multiple screens, so I could just take it off the screen, bring it back. That's easier for me. But let's say that we're working with Tesla, so I'm gonna punch in Tesla. And of course, remember this is linked to number one. So whatever I do here, it's gonna pop up here, it's gonna pop up here, everything that is linked to module number one. And I have the 1130s for April 8th. The way that I got those, or I went here, and I looked at the April 8th chain, and then what I did is take the 1130s, I right click and I go to copy. Now you can also use that to send to different modules, but I'm just gonna copy that. So I already have that copied, right? And then we go here and you can click here and just hit control V to paste, you end up with this code. And then we see the chart for the options. But I'm gonna bring us right back to this. So we have the chart. Now we're gonna pull up Active Trader because that's where you're gonna to want to place and execute your order. So how do we do that on a window that looks like this? Well, we go right here and okay, we're gonna cut right there. I'm gonna remove some of these. Um, well, we're gonna go right up here and, and we're gonna go over to custom grid. 
right? And so I'm gonna just go back to Tesla like this. And then on our custom grid, I'm gonna add another window here, right? And I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller because I don't need it to be that big, but I want it to be sizable so that you guys can see what, exactly what I'm doing. And now I want to include the sidebar, right? And so here I'm gonna enter, let's say, Tesla, just to give us a starting point. So you can see the chart here as well. Now, one thing I like to do with that chart is just maximize our real estate. You see a lot of volume down here. I always choose the overlap volume feature. So now we have Tesla here and here. Now, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna actually gonna turn this into number two, right? And I'm gonna get rid of the chart because we're not trying to chart. And I'm gonna introduce Active Trader. I clicked on Active Trader, right? And now I kind of want to get rid of this. So I'm going to go back up and I'm going to turn off customized grid so we don't have to see that. Okay. Now here we go. And remember, you could just manipulate this, make it your own, make it a little bit bigger, make it smaller. I'm going to keep it about this size just so you guys can get a better look. Now here's a quick shortcut that I have. You could copy this and paste it right here to bring up the option, right? Because we're not trading Tesla underlying stock. We're trading the option and we want to be able to move quickly. So one thing that you can do is just say, turn this into number two. Hit that over there and then just go back to number one, right? So now we have the Tesla calls located in this window. And I just did that by turning it into number two, clicking on it so it populates into module number two. Um, and again, you can just copy and paste. So how do we enter our orders? Well, let's take a look. We wanna pop this down. So you can choose your quantity and there's some, there's some quick buttons here that'll help you out. So if you wanna go with five, 20, 100, whatever it is, you wanna enter that. So I'm gonna just enter one for convenience sakes and make sure that you hit enter. I like to hit enter because then it saves, right? Because there's one. If I just go five, sometimes it doesn't populate. Sometimes it does. You can see that it does here. I have clicked in the past where I've just said, let's say three and it hasn't populated. But, um, you know, I like to make sure I just hit enter. So you won't have any problems with that. Now I want to arm auto send because that means I'm going to click and my order is going to transmit. If I don't have auto send clicked off, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a prompt. And when you get a prompt, it's going to slow you down. If you're a day trader, if you're scalping, if you're trying to move quickly, you don't have time for an additional window. Now, the danger is that once you click, it's go time. You're executing your order. You're sending it through for transmission. Now it may lag anyways, because thinkorswim is slow and it likes to lag. But the idea is that you're transmitting your order immediately. So I'm going to go back to one here and now I'm going to introduce you to triggers with brackets. And this is important, right? So we're going to take a look here. And again, we're dealing with the Tesla 1130s and those are the weekly options. This is for the week coming up right now is April 2nd. And here you see a trigger, right? So what do I have it set to right now? Well, I have it set to a dollar amount and there's a limit and a stop, right? And I have both triggers enabled. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about this. So the idea here is plus one and negative one. These are offsets. What does that mean? Well, I'm offset at a dollar. So if I buy one at 2025, you can look up where you see my trigger limit when you'll see it here. And it's a at 2025. The trigger limit to take profit is at 2125. Then if you look down the trigger limit on the stop where it says TRG minus 1.0 STP is at 1925. So what does this mean? This means that I have a take profit if we go up a dollar and I stop out if we go down a dollar. Okay, but how do we modify that for day trading? Because we're not just trying to go with flat dollar amounts. Well, that would be a good question. Let's look back up here. And what you're going to see is we have our triggers and I'm going to adjust them by clicking here. Instead of the offset, I'm going to change that to a percentage. And I'm going to do that on both, right? So let's say that we want to go for 20%. We want to take profit at 20% and we want to stop out at minus 10%, right? And I hit enter when I'm done those and it's a limit and a stop. And these are day trades, right? So these are day orders. You could even save, you can click on this to save that template and just name it as your own. That way you don't have to set it up every single time. So now we have a trigger for stopping out at minus 10 and we have a trigger for taking profits at plus 20%, right? So let's just scroll all the way down. Let's say that we were just right here because I want to narrow it in so you guys could see it. And then of course, if you want to be able to change that, you can go from a stop to a trailing stop and you can make those decisions here. You can go from day to GTC. 
What does GTC stand for? That's good till canceled. So that gives you an idea of how to work with things. I think for most people, you're going to be starting with just a, a typical, right? Typical input of the, of the trigger with brackets. Like I showed you, you'll have your input and then you could slide things up and down to manipulate them and make them your own. And you do have some other more advanced options here. And remember, as you make changes, you can click on this button and save this template and just say day trading save. I'm not going to save that. I don't need that in my templates, but that gives you guys an idea. So when you're trying to execute move quickly through Thinkorswim platform, this is what you can do and give yourself an idea. Now, Thinkorswim doesn't show you your P&L that has the exact percentage, but you can move along. You've already inputted your order. You have stops. You can have trailing stops. Uh, as I showed you here, stops, trailing stops. You can have limit orders day, good till canceled. You can set it based on the trigger last bid. You have all kinds of options. Um, set it up, make it your own, see what you're comfortable with. And of course, I constantly mention my best practices. Again, I've noted I'm not a huge fan of Thinkorswim right now. It's such a great platform in terms of the robust features, but the most important thing to me is execution, and that is where they're lagging on execution. If you want to learn more, please make sure that you're following me on Profits Taken. That's on Twitter. My handle is Profits Taken. My name is Peter Tarr, for those who don't know. And I am a former professional trader, became licensed over 17 years ago as a trader and an options derivative specialist. Funny enough, I actually worked for the company in which we're looking at the brokerage platform right now. That's TD. And for those of you who want a deeper, more robust understanding, of course, you're welcome to join my insiders group. That's through ProfitsTaken.com. Go with deeper breakdowns, private Q&A sessions, I offer private coaching and a plethora of other options for people who are more serious and trying to get into the markets. But my recommendation to everyone is always move along slowly, move at your pace, understand things, particularly when you're looking at a setup like this and changing the way that you use your brokerage, play with it, test it. This is where paper trading is perfect. I don't think paper trading is a great idea for understanding executions because you'll always have liquidity. Things feel very differently than they do in real time. You'll notice that and you'll be very disappointed with your, with your broker. But where it really helps is the, the platform itself. The platform doesn't change. So setting this kind of thing up, clicking the buttons, finding things, linking different modules, that's all going to be the same in paper trading. Paper trading is basically to me, it's just a demo of the platform that isn't in real time. Um, but it doesn't give you a great demo of trading, if that makes sense. Helps you demo a platform in real time or close to real time but not the actual trading experience. So if you want to get a better understanding of this, certainly do it in paper trading. That way you're not fumbling around saying, was it triggered with brackets or do I maybe enter an offset that is a dollar amount instead of the percentage? Get used to it, make sure you save your templates, get really comfortable. And again, remember, one of the tricks that I use is I preload the contracts here. I copy and paste them as many as you have and then bang, I just move over to yellow because I have this link to yellow click on it and it populates really quickly. It just saves you time of copying and pasting, but you can make it your own. Some people are going to have one screen. Some people are going to have multiple screens. Some people are going to have really big screens. Some people are going to be working off their laptops. I never work off of a mobile phone. So I think that's a really, really dangerous idea with uh, trading stocks and options. But again, make it your own. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and feel free to drop some questions on my Twitter feed. Thanks everyone, good luck, and I hope that this was very helpful.